Hey guys, RC Flyer 85 here. Today we're gonna be checking out the Emacs Magnum. Really excited to check this out, guys. It's brand new, fresh off the press. As you guys can see, it comes in this nice packaging, similar to their motor boxes, just a little bit bigger. Not gonna be unboxing. I've already unboxed it. But inside the box, you do get a positive and negative wire. You get a UFL to a full size adapter for your FPV antenna. Let me get that focus there. You get a UFL to linear whip antenna, which is really, really nice. You get this XT60 here, a couple of nylon standoffs and screws, regular Emacs stickers, your antenna. And here we have the main attraction the Emacs Magnum Tower. As you guys can see, I added on my own XT60 because it was red, and I figured it went better with the color scheme. Uh, well, Emacs's color scheme. So anyways, on the bottom here, you have your 4-in-1 bullet 30-amp ESCs. Uh, these are BL Heli S ESCs, capable of D-Shot. Um, these are pretty pretty well-known in the market right now. You got your uh, shunt resistor right here. So you do have current sensing. On the next level, you have the F4 flight controller. This runs the Omnibus F4 target. Um, on top of that, you have your switchable VTX. This is the switchable between 25 and 200 milliwatts, so it's really, really nice. You have your button right here to change your bands and channels, as well as your power. It's gonna be a long, I believe it's like a 10 second press to change your power output. Um, and your LED will come on when it's in 200 milliwatt, and LED will be off when it's in 25 milliwatt. Um, you have your UFL adapter right here, which is really, really nice. So it makes swapping antennas pretty easy. And of course, you have your LED display here. You also get this FreeSky XM Plus receiver, which fits right here onto these three pins. Now, it doesn't come soldered in case you guys don't want to use it. But if you do want to use it, it sits in right here. It has a little extra. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. There's a foam pad right here. Hold, that's holding up the VTX and it's hanging over a little extra so it actually holds on to the side of the receiver right here. So really, really nice, really well thought out board here. Really loving this, guys. You have your buzzer right here. Remove after washing. <laughs> and let's see, what else? What else do you guys want to see here? You have this. These are your outputs for your camera. So hook your camera, solder on your camera right here. This is your, let's see if I can get this focus a little better. You guys see this? This is for you Spectrum guys out here. Let's see, right here, you have your 3.3 volt pad. So anybody's running Spectrum, this is where you want to solder up your receiver. And like I said, if you don't want to use the XM Plus, you just don't solder it on right here, and you can solder to these pins as usual. Um, and use any receiver you, you want to. Um, let's see. What else can I show you guys here? Actually, I think I need to take it apart now. Once we separate the two boards, get this back in focus. Here you can see on the bottom of your 4-in-1 ESC, you have your connector that connects to the top uh, flight controller, which passes through to all the power and information that it needs to. Um, one little negative, well, there's maybe two or three negatives I have about this. One, these pads are really, really, really close. Um, for so when you do let me see if I can get this really close here when you solder on your XT60 as you guys see or maybe you can't it's <laughs> it's pretty close it's really 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 close now, I do have a gap there but it's tiny 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 and I kind of wish that they would have maybe slanted these pads instead of having them go straight forward and backwards I know some people debate over that uh, but that's just my feelings. And also, one other gripe I really, really have is it's a pain in the butt to put the top stack on because the standoffs hit these little uh, fits right here. 
So you have to make sure that your nylon standoffs are turned correctly and you still kind of have to squeeze them past these fets right here. So wish there was a little bit better spacing right there. Anyways, that's your four in one ESC. A little better look. Now you have your flight controller here. Give you a little, little look at the bottom. Uh, I believe this plug right here is for LEDs. It's a five volt LED support right here. I'm not really sure what LED comes with that plug necessarily, but that's for <laughs> for LEDs. And let's see, that's about it. I think we're gonna go ahead and plug this in and see what it's running, and I'll show you guys all that. I'll be right back. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and connect it up to Betaflight. As a precaution, you may want to throw on your antenna, but I have connected connected this already, and it doesn't power up your VTX. But who knows? Might as well just throw on the antenna just to make sure your VTX is protected. Let's go ahead and plug this up, show you guys what it's running and all that good stuff. All right, let's go right over here into CLI, type version, running, beta flight, Omnibus F4 3.1.7. So it's on the latest beta flight already, no worries there. Um, you see we got OSD here because it is rocking the beta flight OSD. One thing to remember, it doesn't re auto reset or it doesn't auto restart, at least without a battery plugged in. So you're going to have to go ahead and click connect every time. No biggie. But it is running the Betaflight OSD. So if you guys need to know how to set that up, go ahead and look on YouTube. You'll find plenty of videos on that. Let's go ahead and jump into configuration. Out the box, it was set to one shot. I've changed that to DShot 600 because it should be capable of running DShot 600. You have VBAT monitoring on. Current sensing should actually be on. So you do have current sensing. Uh, out the box, it was set to AK2K. I changed that to AK8K. Accelerometer's on. Black box is on because we do have 16 megabytes of black box storage. And, of course, OSD is on. Now, let's go ahead and save and reboot. And, of course, you know, this is an F4 processor, guys. So, I say go ahead. Uh, this time, it wanted to auto-reboot. So, I don't know what's up with that. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Anyways, this F4 processor... Go ahead and turn everything on. Why not? <laughs> you see we're running a 4% CPU. So go ahead and go all out. Turn everything on. Leave everything on. Have all your modes and all that. So anyways, go ahead and jump into BL Heli. Let me, guys, let me show you guys that real quick. Let's go ahead and click connect. Plug up our battery here. Show you what version is running here. All right, so the ESCs come flashed with firmware MH30. And it's rocking 16.5 version of BL Heli. All right, so MH30. You guys remember that? If anybody wants to see, you guys can see the stock settings over here. And I'm actually just for... <laughs> actually, got to keep it clean. I was going to say S and giggles. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and update these to... 16.65, so I can get my nice Game of Thrones startup tone. And we're in we're in the BL Heli uh, Chrome app, so it's going to do all the downloading and all that. So all I have to do is click Flash. And I'm not going to sit here and bore you guys with this. I'm going to uh, wrap this up. If you guys want a little more information, um, go ahead. I'll have links down below. I want to say I did get this from Pyroflip RC. These guys got it over to me super fast. So if you guys are in the U.S., if they're in stock, definitely check out Pyroflip RC. And I'll have links to a couple of different places. I did buy this with my own money. I know it's a little different from my channel, but I did buy this with my own money. So I got no uh, branding down here on the bottom of my video because I was really excited about this. And I am still really excited about this. Can't wait to get a build. Uh, this came in stock and it was kind of a surprise. So I don't have a build ready. Um, but I do have parts coming, so that will be coming soon. But I want to give you guys a first look at the tower itself. I think it's great. Um, this is where the, well, actually, where the sport is headed, I believe next would be, instead of this is pretty much three tiers, I think next we'll have the 4 one ESC and the flight controller all on one board, and then you can have the other stuff on top like this, and that would be great. But for the time being, as long as you don't have a super, super low-profile build, where you don't have 25 millimeters of height, this is going to be great for you. If you got anything above 25 millimeters, 
or 25 millimeters and above, which is most standard builds, this is going to be awesome for you guys. Definitely suggest you guys check this out. Um, there's not too much information, so I wanted to push this video out really quick. But that's about it, guys. As usual, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please do drop them down below. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time.